Marbury Country Park, Cheshire. A beautiful, picturesque place with a diverse array of landscapes. With an abundance of wildlife and peaceful atmosphere, it seems a paradise for nature. However, to the untrained eye, it may be hard to believe that much of it used to be a wasteland that was inhospitable to life. For centuries, the salt industry thrived in this part of Cheshire. This, in turn, allowed for the production of soda ash, also known as sodium carbonate, a highly alkaline chemical. It was the waste produced by this process that all but destroyed the environment here. Remarkably, just over 60 years since the dumping stopped, life has returned. Nature returning to once lost land isn't a rare occurrence, but what makes Marbury Country Park unique is that due to subtle differences throughout the park, different stages of succession can be seen. And an excess of lime waste in the soil creates an unusual habitat for this part of the UK. This is a journey of nature's reclamation of once lost land. Newman's Flash, formed due to the subsidence of an old salt mine, this is where our journey begins. The lime waste that was dumped here is what gives the water its unusual blue-green hue. Years of using this flash to dispose of chemical waste left it uninhabitable for life. However, just over 60 years since the dumping came to a halt, it is now home to a host of wildlife. It's late summer and the flash is teeming with life. Over the raucous of honking geese, there is a rather peculiar, almost alien sound. The lapwing. These precision flying birds are extremely agile in the air and are able to turn in a fraction of a second. Lapwings need a reliable source of invertebrates in order to survive. And the sheer amount of individuals here is a good indicator for the amount of life that Newman's Flash is able to support. A striking contrast to its days of being a lime waste dump. The first stage of succession can be found on the edge of the flash. Reed beds act as a habitat for many species. This moorhen is using the reeds to hide something extremely valuable. Her chicks. The reeds provide cover from predators and protection from harsh weather conditions. However, these chicks need feeding and must venture out from the safety of the reed bed. Unusually for waterfowl, moorhen chicks will stay with their parents and sometimes even help raise the next brood. There is one animal that is so fond of the reeds that it has been named after them and it's rather secretive, often heard and not seen. The reed warbler. These noisy birds have flown all the way from the Sahara Desert to spend their summer breeding in the UK. As the reeds die, they accumulate on the ground, gradually drying out the flash. This is the first stage of succession to dry land, and about a hundred metres away, in another flash known as Ashton's, the full effect of the next stage of succession can be seen. Although there is still some open water here, a significant portion of this flash is dry. The highly calcareous soil allows for unusual plants to grow here. The mouse-eared hawkweed, with its strangely hairy leaves, the marsh halbreen, a member of the orchid family, and the fragrant orchid, 
so named for its clove-like scent. These plants provide an important food source for many insects, especially moths and butterflies. There is one species of moth that is so secretive that in order to see it, you need an expert and some essential equipment. We're looking for six belted clearwing, which is a moth a species that's found on chalk grassland in the south, on coastal habitats, generally again in the south. And then strangely, we've got this colony of six belted clearwing moth up here in Cheshire on this reclaimed industrial land, heavily uh, influenced by both salt and, and uh, lime waste. I search for them using a lure, a lure that's produced artificially and it's the female sex pheromone for six belted clearwing. I keep it in a cool bag uh, because otherwise the lure, the pheromone, evaporates away and it's on a little bung in a muslin bag. And I, then I hang that on vegetation having noted which direction the wind is in, and then we wait for the moth to arrive. As if out of nowhere, the moths appear at the lure. It's not long until the lure is swarming with moths attracted to the pheromones. Now I'm just going to try and pot one. They are notoriously difficult. But let's see if I can get one. There we go. So there is a male six belted clearwing. With its yellow and black stripes, it would be easy to mistake the six-belted clearwing for a wasp or a bee. This type of mimicry is an adaptation that helps protect the moths against predators. The six-belted clearwings thrive here due to the calcareous soil and an abundance of birdfoot trefoil, the roots of which the moth larva feed on. It is highly likely that if Ashton's flash was not used as a lime dump, the six-belted clearing wouldn't be here today. The site is managed for a whole range of wildlife and flora and fauna, uh, including birds' foot trefoil, and it's important that we keep the uh, silver birch and invasive willow scrub well and truly cut back on a rotational basis. So it leaves this open mosaic of open ground, wildflowers, and most importantly for the uh, six belted clearwing, birds foot trefoil. The birch and willow scrub is the next stage of succession. If left to grow naturally, these pioneering trees would take over Ashton's flash and change it from a grassland to a young woodland. Half a kilometre away, in Marshall's Wood, this is exactly what has happened. Predominantly birch, this woodland is the perfect habitat for a wide variety of birds and invertebrates. Some, like the birch shield bug, are entirely dependent on the birch trees for their survival. And, similar to the six-belted clearing, common hoverflies mimic wasps and bees in order to avoid predation. They depend on the abundance of bramble flowers that carpet the woodland's floor to provide them with nectar. This woodland full of pioneering trees is very young, and it is a perfect example of how nature can recover from being a wasteland to a habitat that is able to support a diverse array of life. This is not the last stage of succession, however. In years to come, other, more slowly growing trees will begin to grow here, 
once more altering the ecosystem here at Marbury Country Park.